Good morning, friends. Another day at Miss Winslow's house. Let's get our day started. Good morning, good morning. Yes, it's time to say good morning. Well, we say hello and how do you do to all our friends and teachers too. Good morning, good morning to all of you. There's your teachers. Good morning, all my friends. Let's get our greeting for today. Last time we had a hug, so let's get a high five today. Air high five to everyone. Let's check our weather. What's the weather? What's the weather? What's the weather out today? What's the weather? What's the weather? What's the weather out today? It's not super bright like it was before, so it could be a partly cloudy day. It rained last night, so the grass is pretty wet. So be careful when you go outside. Don't slip and slide. All right, let's check our calendar. Today, we're in our new month of May, and it is May the 6th of 2020. So May 6th, 2020, and it's Wednesday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So no, it is May the 6th, 2020. And today, friends, is National Nurses Day. So if you know a health professional, especially a nurse, say thank you because today is their day. And actually, the whole week is Nurses Week, so you could celebrate them all week. But today is the actual Nurses Day. All right, let's look at our letter of the week. The letter is Z, Z, Z. So let's write that. Capital Z, a line across, diagonal down, and a line across the bottom. And lowercase z is just a shrunken version. So across, down, and bottom. Z, z, z. Let's take a look at our fine board and see if we can find the capital Z and the lowercase z. And then we'll find out what words we'll be making today. There's the lowercase. And our capital Z. Now, last time we did zip and zoom because we were talking about insects, and a lot of them do zip and zoom around with their wings or just fast, fast feet. Today, we're going to see zap. Zap. Z A P and zero. That's one of our numbers in our number line. Zero, the very first. Zero has a big old nothing. Zero. And zap. And zap helps us think more about our insects today. But before we go on, I want to show you the other words that can also begin with Z. Zebra. Zipper. Zucchini. There's that zero and zoo. All right. Well, let's recap our lesson from before about a true insect. An insect can be a bug that has to have six legs. So let's count those legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then it has three body parts, the head, thorax, and abdomen, and not all the bottoms or abdomen look the same. Some can be smaller, some are nice and long, and some can be almost the whole part of their body. And then an insect has two antennae, one, 
too. And the antennas are like feelers, my friends, for when this bug crawls around, those antenna will move and try to feel in the air what they're getting close to. So a true insect has six legs, three body parts, two antennas, and sometimes, it's not on this picture, but it can have wings. So let's look back at our glass bugs. And I'll turn on a little more light, just in case. So we can see, let's take a, ooh, let's take a look at this grasshopper. One, two, three, four, five, six. It does have six legs. And then let's turn it over so we can see the body parts. I see the head. I see a middle section of the body, and then it has a longer abdomen. So three body parts. And you can't see it so well on this one, but it has two tiny antenna. So if you were at school and you were able to look at all of these, you could pick up any of these and see if they are true insects, like this one. You can see the antenna really good there. Skinny but long, six legs, and three body parts. There's the head, the middle thorax, and the bottom abdomen. Let's sing our song so we can remember how to name the insect body parts. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, eyes and mouth, antenna too, six legs and that's an insect for you. I hope you've been practicing that. That's a really nice song to remember how an insect is made. We'll look one more time and see if we can match some of these insects. This is a fly. Let's see if we can find it. Oop, there it is. There's that fly. Six legs, head, thorax, abdomen, little tiny antenna, and look, this one has wings. Red ant. Right there. Two long antenna. There are those pincher app, those pincher um, mandibles and the six legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see one more, my friends. See if we can find another one with wings. Butterfly. Two antenna, three body parts as the head middle thorax, bottom abdomen, and this one has wings. Now showing you that picture, my friends, helps me remember what we're going to talk about or the insect that we're going to focus on today will be the butterfly. Now we had our own butterflies and they've already grown up and we released them, but you didn't get to see how it all happened at Miss Winslow's house. So let's start with our butterfly. You've seen beautiful butterflies outside, but they don't always, or they never start just like this. They have a life cycle. A butterfly begins with an egg, those tiny eggs lay on a leaf, then it munches its way out and is a caterpillar. And this caterpillar is a brand new caterpillar. But as it eats, 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 eats and grows, it'll change color. And this one is a green caterpillar with a red antenna. And it keeps eating, eating, eating. That's like its job all the time, just to eat and fill its belly. So that one day it will hang from a branch 
and wrap itself in a chrysalis. And while it's inside, it's changing. And our big word was, it's going through a metamorphosis to then pop out to be a butterfly. Now, not all caterpillars look the same. Here are a few pictures of some different caterpillars. So they come in different colors. There's white, there's green with spots. There's pink and it kind of looks like it has a butterfly pattern in the middle. Stripes, caterpillars with spikes. But they all will go through the same change. After they eat, 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 and eat, they'll go into their chrysalis to pop out to be a butterfly. Now, just like caterpillars can look different, when butterflies pop out, they can look different. Here's one of my books that I like to show. It has butterflies and moths. Take a look at these, my friends. These butterflies and moths, they have different patterns on their wings, different colors. Some may have spots or stripes. So there are a lot of different kinds of butterflies. Bless. So I love this book because it helps you see the butterfly's life cycle. Again, starting with an egg to a caterpillar and to its chrysalis to pop out as a butterfly. And see this butterfly, when it was a caterpillar, kind of has the same colors or spots like it did, does when it pops out of the chrysalis. So this is definitely one good book to look at. And then if you get to your library or have these at home or can look at them online, there are a lot of other great books that will help you see how a butterfly becomes a butterfly. I like this one because each page the photographer did such a great job. Those are real butterfly eggs. That then, that caterpillar, he just popped out of that egg. And he's eating on his shell. And he's changing. There he is as, as a tiny caterpillar. Until when he's done eating, he's attached himself to the branch He's getting ready to form his chrysalis. His outer skin falls off and the chrysalis will get harder until look, you can kind of see through the chrysalis where his wings have formed, but he's not ready yet. He slowly pops out and his wings are wet but when he's all dry, look at that beautiful butterfly, ready to fly away. So these books are great to show you real pictures. That's another egg, a different kind of caterpillar, and he's eating and eating. And then he changed color one more time before he goes to the top to get ready for his chrysalis. Look at that, that's an all green chrysalis. And he waits until it's time to pop out a beautiful butterfly. So these are great books that have fabulous pictures that photographers did for you. So now my friends, we're gonna take a look at a video from Scholastic. way. It started inside a teeny tiny egg. A female butterfly had laid that egg on a leaf. After four days, the egg hatched. A little caterpillar crawled out. It was so hungry. It ate and ate 
in eight. Here is the caterpillar two weeks later. You can see it got a lot bigger. All those plants it was eating really helped it to grow, but it still needed to eat more. When it was done eating, its skin hardened. It changed into a chrysalis and hung from the stem of a plant. Inside, it was turning into an adult. Its body had totally changed. It had big, wet wings. Its wings dried in the warm sun. At last, it was a beautiful butterfly. Wasn't this metamorphosis amazing? A metamorphosis is the series of changes some animals, like butterflies, go through as they grow from a tiny creature inside an egg to an adult. Moths go through a metamorphosis too. But a moth caterpillar spins a cocoon around itself instead of changing into a chrysalis. So the next time you see a butterfly flutter by, remember all the changes it went through to get that way. Alrighty, my friends. I love these scholastic videos because they show us real pictures in real time. Now thinking of real pictures, when we had our butterfly come out of its chrysalis, they were called painted ladies. And when it started, do you remember these? That was the chrysalis that our butterflies were hanging in while we were waiting for them to change. So they're all empty now. And when the butterfly came out, there's the painted lady and what our butterfly looked like. And then we can have a close up shot here of some legs. I even see um, the, its long tongue, its sucker. It's called the probus. There's the antenna, two antenna. I took a picture of it when it was outside and then it got on a flower and it was ready to already start feeding. All right, so one last time, looking at the life cycle, there's the eggs and then the caterpillar and then the caterpillar as it's growing and eating in a chrysalis and the butterfly. Now let's see if we can do a hand sign that you can show moms and dads at home. Here's your egg on the leaf. Then the caterpillar gets out and crawls and eats and eats and eats till when it's all fat, it'll hang down in this chrysalis and shake, shake, shake because it's changing, taking its metamorphosis till it pops out like a butterfly. All right, so egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, butterfly. All right, so now the last thing I have for you is let's do a little insect patterning. So we talked about patterns. And one simple pattern is an A, B, A, B, A, B pattern. So since we're talking about butterflies today, let's start off with that one. We'll let the butterfly be A, and we'll let the green insect be B. So what needs to happen next? Another butterfly. Another green insect, another butterfly, another green insect. Well, let's take it over to the box. Butterfly, green, butterfly, green, butterfly, green. Hmm, what should come next? If you remember the pattern, you knew it was a butterfly, 
then another green insect. All right, let's get harder. Next, A, B, B, A, B, B pattern. So let's use this green bug, A, and the red bugs, our Bs. A, B, B, because the Bs look the same, right? So next should be a green bug, red bug, and you guessed it, another red bug. Let's see what else we can do. A, A, B, A, A, B. So now we need to change it up. So if we use the same bugs here, it would be green, green, and one red. Then green, green, and one red. See how the pattern changes? But it has the same creatures. A, A, B, A, A, B. All right, and one last pattern. A, B, C. A, B, C. So that means we're going to have three totally different insects to make this pattern. So let's try dragonfly, cricket, redbug, dragonfly, see the same A, Cricket, same B. Red bug, same C. And if we put them in the case, A, B, C, A, B, C. What could come next, my friends? A, the next dragonfly. Then B, the next cricket, to C, the next red bug. Same pattern, keeps on going. A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. Good job. All righty, my friends. You can do this at home with blocks, with insects, all other things. All right, one last. Let's do our math and dice. So today, we're going to add our numbers. Plus equals. So we're going to roll a die for each one and find the bugs that we need to do our math. All right. Let's see the first one. Three. So three bugs. One, two, three insects. Plus four insects. One, two, three, four. And we'll find the number cards for those two. Three. Four. There it is. So let's see. Three plus four. Three and four together equals how many insects, my friends? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven answers this math problem. What's three? plus four is seven. Seven insects. All right. You can do this at home with your dice and add your rocks, insects, anything you may have. Well, that's our lesson for today, my friends. Talking about what a true insect is and using some insect math and we learned all about how a butterfly became a true insect with its antenna. 
wings, six legs, and three body parts. But it started as a caterpillar. So have a great day, my friends. When I leave you, I'll be feeding Uncle Bubbles because he's still here with me, enjoying um, home at school here, school at home here. You all have a great day. I love you. Goodbye, goodbye, good friends, goodbye.